Last episode, we built the roof. This episode is going to be a lot of poor man's fiberglassing or PMF. The PMF itself is a fairly straightforward process, but it's a little bit time consuming. And at this point, I was about a week or so out from wanting to leave for Alaska and the poor man's fiberglassing, I recommend you plan a little more time because there are a lot of layers of painting that need to dry as part of the poor man's fiberglass. Now, the first step of poor man's fiberglass is to pick a fabric that you're going to wrap your pieces in or maybe your whole build if your build isn't modular. There are several different fabrics that can be used. I've heard of people using just kind of regular bed sheets. Um, I did try some of it with a little bit of a flannelly bed sheet, but ultimately what I purchased for my build is a painter's canvas. So we went to Home Depot. Menards has it too, but um, for me, I, I like the feel of the Home Depot painter's cloth a little bit better. And this is just essentially a drop cloth that you can buy to protect the ground when you're painting. And so it was a fairly inexpensive way to get some basic canvas material. Once we had that material purchased, then we needed to go ahead and cut it to the size that we needed for each individual piece. So I really, again, made this build modular. And so I ended up having to do a lot of separate pieces. Um, we had the side walls, front and back, the bed frame, and then the roof, and then there's going to be the walls in the pop-up part that we haven't constructed fully yet. I'm going to interrupt just for a second here. My build episodes do go in chronological order of how I recorded everything, and so there's a little interlude here where I stopped cutting and ironing and getting the canvas ready. Um, and I moved towards a couple of other tasks. So we made little notches for our mounting clamps to go in in the sidewalls. So we're just chiseling out a little block for the mounting clamps to rest in. You can see a mounting clamp fitting in there and then doing a little bit more routing of edges in order to try to get uh, a nice finished edge on our walls. And sanding the edge a little bit there. But back to talking about poor man's fiberglassing, I found some really good tutorials on YouTube. And so I highly recommend that you do a, a Google search. There's one channel, I'll look her up and write her name on the screen here, but there's one channel that had really nice step-by-step -step guide and she made a beautiful finished foam teardrop trailer. Um, so you can check out her poor man's fiberglassing there. I think she does a great job with that video. But first step again was to, to cut the first step again was to cut the canvas to the right size and then we ironed it. Now on the later half of our poor man's fiberglassing, some of the pieces did go on without ironing just because we were running out of time and I was trying to move quickly. And you can tell the difference when you iron it first. Um, we started with a regular iron, but ultimately we used a steamer, just hung it and used a steamer to kind of take out the wrinkles. And that does give a smoother, flatter finish you can often see the wrinkles in the poor man's fiberglassing if you don't take them out ahead of time. So ironing or steaming can help out quite a bit. And then you apply the canvas to the wood or foam. You can go straight to foam as well with glue. It is recommended that you use a tight bond two wood glue. And so that's why we've been using that tight bond two for most of the project. It's just been an easy glue to just keep everything the same. Um, coat that nice and even with the glue we used a foam roller to try to get it on evenly then you put it on and try to spread out any little bumps that develop as it goes down and ironing it on flat makes a big difference too so i really recommend having an iron there to keep it smooth push out the wrinkles and get the surface that you are desiring also helps make nice crisp edges when you use the iron now, some people will ask why use poor man's fiberglass versus like a regular fiberglassing. Honestly, the poor man's fiberglassing is supposed to be a little bit more cost effective. Um, and then it just seemed a little more accessible and easy for me to, to start with. I've never done any true fiberglassing, so you can definitely let me know if you think it's just as easy as poor man's fiberglassing. But the poor man's fiberglassing was simple and straightforward and, and very easy for me to understand and apply. So you can see here that we have the two sidewalls we're starting with, they each have a, a piece cut and we're just wrapping it around. I didn't pour men's fiberglass the full way around since that's the interior with the foam paneling there. Um, just made sure that the outside was fully covered and protected. 
And then we'll weather strip in between the different pieces of the modular build to try to prevent any water from coming through and in between. Again, using that iron to get crisp edges was really important. Without that, it was really hard to get it well adhered around the corner nice and crisply. And then you can see here that, you know, the hardest part of this was getting the fabric around curves in a nice way. So the 90 degree angles were fairly simple, but anytime you have a little bit of a different shape, you really have to work to try to kind of smooth out any wrinkles, cut at a good angle so that you can get a, a nice finish. Again, that tutorial YouTube video that we were following shows a really nice job working around curves, but it's it takes some time regardless to do a nice, good, thorough job. So there's a uh, nearly finished, at least with the gluing and trimming of the canvas piece. Back to doing a little more routing. Again, we really liked those smooth corners and a little more sanding too to make all the surfaces nice and smooth. And then it was time to start working on the poor man's fiberglassing on the bed platform. So to try to get everything in nice, we started with some of the smaller pieces. So here I'm working on putting the canvas on the shark fin recess. So I had to get a piece in there and then just folded some of the canvas over. And then we get to work doing a little bit more gluing on the full bed platform. And we'll put the bigger pieces on over the top of that. And while I'm skipping forward a little bit here, this really was fairly time consuming. You can see how many little adjustments and cuts and, and things like that need to be done to try to get everything to lay flat and look good. If you had like a larger rectangular build, this might not take so much time, but we had a lot of edges and angles in our project, especially because again, we had it in all these little pieces so that we could take it apart and store it in the garage after use. And so it ended up being a lot of small pieces to put together. I'm trying to remember how many gallons of type on glue we went through on this project. And I think it was like three. Um, we had one that we started with and then had to buy two more, but it was a lot of glue. We're trying to double team it to go a little bit faster, um, roll and brush. And then it did help a little bit when someone held things tight as you were ironing to try to get all those wrinkles out. So there's the bottom of the bed platform. And then you can see that we have a large piece spread out on top of the roof. The roof made a nice cutting surface as we were making the smaller strips. And so we could do a nice straight cut on that. Almost like a table at a fabric store. Here we're cutting the pieces that are going to go on the beams on the bed platform frame. So starting to get that glue on so that we can apply one of those. At one point we did start using some thumbtacks to help hold things down on these kind of irregular shapes so that we could pull and keep things straight. Again, if you have two people, you can oftentimes just have the other person hold. But if you're doing it yourself, tacking some of it down did help quite a bit until you got it glued. This was most noticeable on the narrow surfaces. So you can see here that we're starting on kind of the top edge of one of the beams. And so there's just not a lot of surface area for that glue to hold on to. And the canvas is, it's not heavy, but it does pull down a little bit. So the tacks just help keep it in place while it's gluing. Once you have a big surface area, like the side of the beam done, then it really stuck in place really well. It's important to get all the surface area glued. If you miss a spot, then it won't adhere down to the wood or the foam, depending on what you're gluing to as well. And you'll get little bubbles in your poor man's fiberglassing. There, dad's just using a marker to mark where the holes for the strut attachments go so we can find those later to drill into. We ended up flipping the pieces around a lot to get top and bottom. And then once we had the canvas glued on, it's time to start painting. Now the type of paint recommended for poor man's fiberglass is a latex exterior paint. And so we did go and buy some cans of that. Specifically, I bought them for the outer paint, the one that you're gonna see so that it looked nice with the truck. But if you have a paint recycling center next to you, that is a way to get free paint. And so we did pick up some from there, which was nice because we went through several gallons of paint on this, um, probably three to four to get the whole thing covered in multiple coats. The first coat of paint for poor man's fiberglass is going to be a fairly diluted paint. So you mix 75% water to 25% paint. So 
three parts water, one part paint, mix it together. It gets really thin and kind of sloppy to paint on, but that just helps it absorb into the canvas really well so that you get a good absorption and a nice waterproof poor man's fiberglassing when you're done. We were wonderful to have a volunteer, <laughs> my mother, to start some of the painting while we continued gluing on the canvas. We got the canvas mostly on the bed platform frame and bed platform itself, and then we started working on the roof. The roof went a little bit faster. It was a nice, fairly flat surface with nice, good edges to wrap around, so less nooks and crannies to cut things through. So we were able to get the top glued on and then work on the sides and wrap it all the way around. And I've had this truck camper now for about a half a year. It's been through rain and snow, and I haven't seen any leaking coming from the roof yet, so everything looks really good there. All right, after the first layer of paint had dried on the sidewalls, it was time to sand it down. Sanding it in between each layer of paint helps the next layer go on a little bit smoother. So you take out the rough edges and try to get everything kind of nice and sanded down. Don't over sand, you'll go through the canvas. Um, I was working a little too hard on the corners and, and ended up having to patch a little bit because I took too much off. But that sanding really will help you end up with a smoother surface for your final product. All right, so continuing to put that 7525 paint on the sidewalls. So here you can see the 7525% bucket. We mixed up different buckets of different concentrations so that we could easily just go and start with the first bucket and work our way down. And then we were back into the garage gluing a few more pieces together. I'm working on the door frame there on the back door wall. And then we're going to start cutting the wood for the sidewalls. Now I'd like to mention, since this is the first time I'm mentioning it in this video, my final build is a wedge style pop-up camper. We originally were building for a full pop-up. So right now we're working on walls that are gonna fit the full pop-up build. We had a couple issues with getting the roof up easily by myself with the full pop-up walls. And so in the last two days of the build, we converted it to a wedge. We are gonna probably work back around and getting this into a full pop-up. But just, you know, you're going to be watching us build the walls right now for a full pop up. And then you'll see us convert things later, likely not in this episode, but in a future episode. But if you're looking at the final product and thinking, huh, those walls don't look like they're the right size or shape for that. You're probably right. We are working on a full pop up build at this point. Our original full pop-up design was made to imitate the hiatus style camper with the hard-sided pop-up walls. So that's a cool camper to look into if you're looking for a, a full pop-up hard-sided wall camper. All right, now we're putting on our 75-25 mixture onto the bed platform frame. And then back in the garage, we're cutting the pieces of wood for the pop-up walls. And here you can see the wall starting to take shape. So we essentially used a quarter inch plywood and then we framed it out with little strips of quarter inch plywood and we're gonna put foam in the middle. We were really trying to keep those narrow and lightweight so they could fold down and have space to come down inside the truck camper um, and then have them not add too much extra weight and be easy to push up. After those pieces were glued on and moved over, it was back to poor man's fiberglassing doing some sanding on the pieces that had the first layer and then getting the first layer on the roof. Um, you can see that we have switched to a new paint. I was using leftover cans of paint at this point, so we didn't have like a full can to start with, but the blue is the next paint can that we had opened up. We're still working on 7525 on the bed platform, but we're gonna start using a 5050 for the second coat on the walls. And again, here you can see that's a latex house paint. And that blue one is one that we had picked up from the recycling center. Here are some triangle pieces that are gonna be part of the pop-up sidewalls. Dad was working on those down in the basement while I was sanding and mom was painting up in the garage. It was kind of nice having different colored paints cause you could more easily see which layer things were on. And since it was so nice out, we had some of the smaller pieces out in the backyard so that they could have the sunlight help them dry a little bit faster. So again, so far things have glue, canvas, a first layer of 75-25, again that's 25% paint, 75% water, and then a second layer of 50-50 we're starting on. 
down in the wood shop, dad is cutting out some windows in the sidewalls. So both of the pop-up sidewalls, we had designed a window to go in there. I wanted to have a cross breeze when that popped up. I just let a lot of light and air inside. You can see the outline for how the window is going to go. We designed a, a plexiglass sliding window. Now, again, these sidewalls are not on my truck camper right now because I converted everything to a wedge. But the back wall of my wedge does have a, a window in it. And that is the design that we had made for all three walls originally. Now, I've had a little bit of trouble with the window on my back wall leaking. And part of that is because that wall now tips a little bit. So things kind of drain onto it a, a little bit different angle. So we might redesign those windows when we put in the full pop up again. But just just, you know, it's a two pieces of plexiglass, they slide in grooves. And it was a pretty easy window to, to DIY ourselves. All right, back up in the backyard. I'm working on the wall that goes against the back window of the truck. We're getting that canvas finally put on. And then here are the side walls. We've got the foam in them, the window cut out, and dad sanding down the foam so that it's at the same height as the plywood framing. Um, again, we used a, a quarter inch plywood there, and we also used a quarter inch foam. And then here's another view of us doing some angles. We're getting the canvas on the back door wall. And we had to take another trip to Menards. This time I was going to get the paint color that I wanted on the exterior of my truck camper. So I was kind of matching it to the truck color itself, keeping things uniform looking. Um, so I've got a bunch of different grays out here that I'm holding out to the truck and trying to find the best color. And I ended up picking a color called Dark and Stormy. Back in the backyard, we're putting paint on again. This one, I am starting with the 7525, because this is the first layer of paint on the back door wall. But we're moving along on the bed platform and the roof. They're going to get their first coat of full latex paint. So again, they've had the 7525, the 5050, and, now, and here's 100% latex paint. Dad's doing some of the sanding on the sidewalls to get that prepped. And those are about ready for their first coat of the full latex paint as well. So getting some of that gray on there. It's kind of fun to see the final color come together. And we're gonna try to go for two full coats of the full latex paint. You can put more on if you'd like. We've got one of those sidewalls demonstrating how that's gonna fold into it, making sure it's the right length and checking there. And then, we had more canvas to cut because those pop-up walls also need to be fiberglassed. Using a chalk line just to make sure we have a nice straight cut and trying to iron out some of those wrinkles. The pop-up sidewalls we were attaching to this piece of plywood that's gonna screw into the bed platform frame. For the hinge on that, since they were folding, we were relying on the fabric and the poor man's fiberglassing to kind of be that hinge. So you can see here how we have the poor man's fiberglass glued on to both that supporting piece of wood and the pop-up sidewall itself. And it just kind of bends there. When everything is down, it'll be at that angle. And when those walls are popped up, it'll be here. We're getting a second coat of paint on the window wall and the back door wall. And we're putting a full coat of full latex on the roof. And over here, you can see the bed platform drying. We're starting to get a little assembly line going. We're on the first or second coat. Can't remember on those ones. There you can see we're all in kind of various stages of painting. Um, and we're getting the pop-up walls in the back now to get the first layer of paint on those as well. Luckily, it was nice, beautiful weather out so we can sit in the yard and get everything propped up. You can see we've started on a couple different color paint cans too. Again, more stuff from the recycling center. And again, a lot of these pieces had some small detail edges to get painted, especially the door frame on the back door wall that had a lot of, lot of little grooves to paint around it in. Back down in the wood shop, we were cutting a little bit more plywood. And again, we're making the strips to frame out more of the pop-up walls. We had had the 
side pop-up walls done, but not the front or the back ones yet. So now we're working on the front slash back pop-up walls. The front pop-up wall is kind of the headboard of the bed. And so that one doesn't have a window in it. It's a solid panel. The back pop-up wall is going to have a window just like the two side pop-up walls. We've got that quarter inch foam we're putting in there and just a little bit of insulation and just a tiny bit of structural support. That stuff's pretty flimsy, but um, just fiberglass, poor man's fiberglass in with it just gives it a little bit thicker, firmer support. And then on the headboard wall, we did try to put some essentially like strips through the middle too. So that if we leaned up against it, there was the double thickness quarter inch plywood in a couple of spots. And here we're taking the window piece out of the back wall, uh, stenciling that and getting that cut. And then we're gluing in the frame around the window there. Still the type on two glue. The quarter inch foam came with a uh, kind of weatherproofing on the back of it. So we had to peel that off and then cut it to go around and into the wood frame there. You can see that that back wall that goes over the back door. That one is very little foam in it, but anything that wasn't framed out did get the foam put in it. Sanding things down a little bit so everything's nice and flat. And then that wall needs to get the canvas put on it so that it's ready to go into the poor man's fiberglassing assembly line rotation. Also sanding down the roof so that the roof can get its next layer. And here is the front pop-up wall. So you can see that kind of headboard look. And there are all four of the pop-up walls together getting painted. Putting the first layer of full latex paint on the wall that goes up against the back window of the truck. And then we went to Menards again. <laughs> I think we're just getting a little more plywood there. And here we're starting to build the back door um, itself. And so you can see things are kind of framed out. We have area to put plywood at the bottom of it. And then there's going to be room for a window. And this window we actually did buy from an online company. So it's an RV window. I got it off of Amazon. So like I've done before for other Amazon orders, I'll put the link to it in the description box for this video. I am an Amazon affiliate and I may earn from qualifying purchases. Um, but personally, when I watch videos, I just really like being able to go straight to links to look at things. So I wanted to include the links for you guys if you were interested in what type of window we used. That window has been great, no leaking, and it's been simple and durable for my build. All right, so we're getting the canvas on the door. And the door is going to be the last piece that needs to be fiberglassed. So then we're trying to get things finished up. I think at this point, we're almost done with the side walls. Um, but some of our pieces still don't have their first full coat of latex paint on them. We were using all of our available sawhorses to get this done, including some makeshift ones made out of garbage cans. All right, here we're putting back in the attachments for the struts, gas struts that'll help support the roof. And then I'm gonna continue with some painting. Down in the wood shop, we are working on figuring out a latching mechanism for a back door. So a handle that I can open from the outside and then can lock from the inside. And I'm sure there's many different ways to go about door latches. We ended up using a handle from our garage door and we modified it so that when it twisted, the two metal pieces went up into the top and the bottom beam of my truck. And then on the inside, I can put a little metal rod through it to lock it. You can see this in the full tour and we'll talk about it more later on in the build episodes. And then we went back up to the truck and we started going ahead and putting the finished painted walls on. Things fit a little bit differently now, now that everything had canvas and multiple layers of paint, it was a little bit tighter. So here you can see I'm trying to kind of shove things into position with a rubber mallet and a block of wood. But ultimately, we did have to trim a little bit of the canvas away. And so I would just mention that if you are also on your project 1.0, do not forget that things will be thicker after the poor man's fiberglass and make sure that you add just a little extra room and tolerance for that to go in. Because we, we really kind of had to smoosh them in and then trim away a little bit. And that really tight connection does make it a little harder to get the modular pieces apart. There you can see where we're attaching. 
And then we're still working on painting the pop-up walls, even while we're putting the finished pieces on the truck. Test fitting the back door in there. You can see that that door is definitely not finished being painted. It's a whole different color. We'll get it to the gray eventually. And then here in the garage, the finished pieces are set up together. So we've got the basic bottom walls. We've got the bed platform frame and the roof all together there. And then we did end up having to take the back door back down to the wood shop because just like with the side walls, we didn't leave enough room for that extra thickness after the poor man's fiberglassing was on. So we had to trim a little bit off and refiberglass the edge. So you can see it's trimming just a little bit of it. And then we cut out the hole for the back window. So we had that stenciled and traced and then cut it out and test fitting the back window. It was a little too narrow, so we took just a little bit more and there, it fits, it looks nice. Now the window is made for a thicker wall than what our door was. And so you can see that, that there's a little bit of gapping. We're gonna end up building a wood frame, which you can see here, to go underneath that so that we can screw that in and adhere it. And then we use an air nailer to nail those pieces into place. Ideally, that would have happened before I poor man's fiberglass, but we just ended up painting those pieces of wood. They're on the inside of the truck for the most part. So works out there on the outside when I open the door, but inside most of the time. And then we're cutting some panel plywood. I'm just going to use that on the inside of the truck camper just for a, a nicer finished appearance to go over the foam where it's not poor man's fiberglass. And this is going to be a good spot to end the fifth episode in the build series. Next week, we'll go ahead and discuss the windows that we put in the pop-up walls, and then we're going to assemble everything and actually try the pop-up. Now, as you know, there's a spoiler alert, that full pop-up's going to fail, and we're going to quickly make some wedge-shaped walls so that we can turn it into a wedge camper. But if you're curious to see our failed version of the full pop-up walls, and then the completed prototype one with the wedge-shaped walls, tune in to the next episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great week, everyone.